The viral headline said, West Coast shaken by earthquake near underwater volcano as experts warn eruption is imminent. That headline set off a firestorm. But beneath 1,400 meters of water and 300 miles from Oregon, Axial Seamount operates on its own, on a silent timeline far from the media's countdown clock. Its summit is watched by deep sea fiber networks streaming real-time data. What is the real danger here? The threat of sudden eruption or the rush to believe every viral alert? Let's cut through the suspense and see what the numbers actually reveal. Nearly 300 miles west of the Oregon coast, the ocean floor rises into a vast hidden mountain. Axial Seamount stretches upward from the depths, its summit sitting about 1,400 meters over 4,600 feet beneath the surface. That is deeper than two and a half times the height of One World Trade Center, stacked end to end. From the base on the seafloor, Axial climbs another 1,100 meters, roughly the height of three Eiffel Towers, before reaching its broad volcanic summit. The sheer scale defies easy comparison. If Axial's peak could be lifted onto dry land, it would tower over nearly every mountain in the Pacific Northwest. Instead, it lies cloaked in darkness, part of the Juan de Fuca Ridge, a chain of volcanic features stretching along the boundary between tectonic plates. Its footprint sprawls for miles, with a summit caldera nearly as wide as downtown Portland. Despite its size, Axial is invisible from shore. No plume, no island, just a vast expanse of open sea. Yet its presence is anything but subtle. The volcano's immense bulk pushes up against the ocean, creating a pressure zone that scientists can measure from hundreds of miles away. Every pulse of magma, every slow swelling or sudden drop, registers on sensitive instruments anchored to the seafloor. This remoteness is both an obstacle and an opportunity. Axial's isolation means it poses little risk to people on land, but it also offers a rare window into the inner workings of an active volcano, untouched by roads, buildings, or crowds. Its depth and scale make it an ideal natural laboratory, one that scientists have spent decades wiring for observation, determined to catch the next eruption as it unfolds far beneath the waves. Fiber optic cables snake out from the Oregon coast, plunging nearly a mile beneath the waves to reach Axial Seamount. Here, the Ocean Observatory's initiative's regional cabled array transforms the deep ocean into a real-time laboratory. Every second, pressure sensors anchored to the caldera floor register minute changes, sometimes less than a millimeter, tracking the slow rise and fall of the seafloor as magma pulses below. Seismometers, tuned to catch even the faintest rumble, record earthquakes and volcanic tremor with split-second accuracy. Hydrophones pick up the distant crackle of shifting rock, while chemical sensors and mass spectrometers sample the hot fluids gushing from hydrothermal vents. Two vent fields are wired with these instruments, Ashes and the International District. At Ashes, black smoker chimneys billow clouds of minerals and heat, their chemical signatures changing with every shift in the volcanic system. High-definition cameras keep watch, capturing bursts of new venting or the arrival of strange deep-sea creatures. Microbial DNA sensors, tucked among the rocks, track how life responds when the volcano stirs. All this data travels instantly through the cables, surfacing at research labs in Oregon and Washington. Scientists, many of them submarine volcanologists, watch the streams in real time. They are not just waiting for the next eruption. They are testing how well their instruments can spot warning signs and how quickly they can separate real volcanic unrest from background noise. The cabled array at Axial is the most advanced of its kind. It is the reason researchers can talk about eruption forecasts with more confidence here than almost anywhere else on Earth. On January 9, 2025, the U.S. Geological Survey recorded a magnitude 4.2 earthquake centered just off the Oregon coast near Barview. The epicenter was about 200 miles from Axial Seamount, placing it well outside the direct influence of the volcano's magma system. The quake rattled local nerves and made headlines, but its location and depth pointed to a different story. According to the U.S. Geological Survey Event Bulletin, this was a shallow crustal event, typical of the background seismicity that defines this stretch of the Pacific margin. The region offshore Oregon is no stranger to earthquakes in this size range. 
Over the past decade, dozens of magnitude 4 or greater events have struck within a 100-mile radius of the Blanco Fracture Zone, a tectonic boundary known for frequent moderate quakes. The November 2025 event fit this pattern. Seismologists reviewing the waveforms saw nothing unusual. The quake produced a sharp, single jolt, with no sign of the earthquake swarms or volcanic tremor that often precede eruptions at Axial. Initial social media posts speculated about a possible connection to the volcano, but the data told a more routine story. The distance, nearly 200 miles from Axial, meant that the earthquake's energy was unlikely to reach the magma chamber or trigger any volcanic response. For scientists, this was a classic example of tectonic background noise, not a warning sign. The event's real significance lay in how it highlighted the need to separate ordinary offshore earthquakes from the signals that matter most for eruption forecasting. Stretching roughly 350 kilometers across the ocean floor, the Blanco Fracture Zone stands out as one of the Pacific's most restless tectonic boundaries. Unlike the towering ridges or plunging trenches that mark other plate edges, Blanco is a transform fault, a place where two slabs of Earth's crust slide past each other side by side. This right lateral movement means the plates on either side move horizontally, not up and down. As a result, the ground rarely shifts vertically enough to displace large volumes of water, keeping the risk of tsunami generation extremely low. Frequent earthquakes are a hallmark of the Blanco system, but most are moderate in size and short-lived. The fault acts like a pressure valve, releasing built-up strain through a steady rhythm of magnitude 4s and 5s. Marine seismologists who monitor these events from both shore-based labs and deep-sea observatories describe Blanco as a textbook example of transform fault mechanics. Its seismic records show sharp, abrupt jolts, signals that differ from the long, rolling waves produced by subduction zones. The length and geometry of Blanco make it an efficient conveyor of tectonic stress between the Juan de Fuca and Gorda ridges. But because its motion is mostly horizontal, the consequences for people on land are minimal. Even when clusters of quakes ripple along its length, the energy rarely translates into surface shaking strong enough to be felt on shore. For scientists, Blanco's steady activity is a source of data and insight, not alarm. Its behavior helps clarify the difference between routine tectonic motion and the more complex signals that might hint at volcanic unrest elsewhere along the seafloor. Three fault systems shape the story of earthquakes and volcanoes along the Pacific coast, but their differences are often lost in the noise of breaking news. The Blanco Fracture Zone, running offshore from Oregon, is a transform fault. Its movement is mostly horizontal, two slabs of ocean crust sliding past each other. This side-by-side -side motion rarely lifts or drops the seafloor, so the risk of a tsunami is minimal, no matter how many moderate earthquakes ripple along its length. To the north and east, the Cascadia subduction zone tells a different story. Here, the Juan de Fuca plate dives beneath North America, storing centuries of strain in a locked boundary. When it finally slips, the result can be a magnitude 9 earthquake and a catastrophic tsunami. These events have reshaped the coastline in the past and will do so again. This is the mega thrust fault that emergency planners worry about, not the transform faults offshore. Farther south, California's San Andreas Fault is another transform system, but it is entirely separate from both Cascadia and Blanco. It cuts through the state, producing large earthquakes with a different style of motion and no direct connection to the undersea volcanoes off Oregon. Axial Seamount, meanwhile, sits apart from all three. Its eruptions are driven by magma rising from deep below the seafloor, not by the grinding of tectonic plates. The volcano's activity is monitored for signs of inflation and seismic swarms, not for the kind of sudden, landscape-altering rupture seen in Cascadia events. Distinguishing these systems is not just a matter of scientific precision, it is the difference between understanding real hazards and chasing after shadows. In April 1998, a swarm of undersea earthquakes caught scientists' attention. Instruments anchored to the caldera floor at Axial Seamount recorded a sudden drop in pressure, evidence of rapid seafloor subsidence. When research vessels later mapped the site, they found fresh lava flows and collapse pits, 
confirming an eruption had occurred nearly a mile beneath the surface. Thirteen years later, in April 2011, a similar sequence unfolded. Again, earthquake swarms and pressure sensors revealed the telltale signs, uplift then abrupt deflation as magma escaped through new fissures. Remotely operated vehicles called ROVS surveyed the aftermath and captured images of still cooling lava and reshaped vent fields. The 2015 eruption arrived just four years after the last, but this time scientists were ready. Continuous monitoring had revealed a pattern. The seafloor rose steadily between eruptions, inflating like a slow-motion balloon. By early 2015, uplift had reached around 30 centimeters, roughly one foot, above the baseline after 2011. When that threshold was crossed, seismic swarms erupted, followed by a dramatic deflation. Subsequent dives documented lava flows up to 127 meters thick along the North Rift Zone, with collapse pits showing how molten and mobile the eruption had been. This repeatable link between uplift and eruption gave researchers a new tool. If the caldera floor reached a certain height, around 30 centimeters above its reset point, an eruption soon followed. For the first time, scientists could use real-time data to forecast an undersea eruption, not just reconstruct it after the fact. That fuel gauge measured by pressure sensors and confirmed by ROV dives now serves as a kind of fuel gauge for Axial's volcanic cycles. Pressure sensors anchored to the caldera floor now show Axial's summit standing about 10 centimeters higher than it was before the 2015 eruption. That may sound like a small change, but in the deep ocean, it represents millions of cubic meters of magma slowly forcing its way into the crust. Scientists have tracked this inflation with millimeter precision, watching as the caldera floor rises and pauses in fits and starts. The current uplift already exceeds the threshold that triggered Axial's last eruption, yet there has been no sign of a breakout. To explain this, researchers point to a subtle but important shift beneath the surface. Each cycle of magma intrusion and eruption doesn't just refill the chamber, it leaves the surrounding rock a little tougher than before. The crust, repeatedly fractured and healed, grows stiffer over time. This means that the same amount of magma now produces less uplift than it did a decade ago. Instead of erupting at the old threshold, Axial may need another 20 centimeters of inflation, nearly double what has already been measured, to build up enough pressure to break through the reinforced crust. This stiffening is not just theory, it is a pattern seen at Iceland's Krafla volcano, where each eruption cycle required more force to crack the ground. At Axial, the evidence comes from the numbers themselves, more magma, higher uplift, but a system that resists eruption longer than before. The inflation gauge is no longer a simple fuel meter, it is a moving target shaped by the volcano's own evolving mechanics. On November 1st, 2025, a new kind of experiment quietly went live at Axial Seamount. For the first time, physics-based eruption forecast models were set to run in real time, drawing from every pressure pulse, seismic tremor, and chemical shift recorded by the cabled array. These models are not just looking for patterns, they use equations that describe how magma moves, how the crust flexes, and how stress builds and releases in the deep. The aim is simple, predict the next eruption before it happens, and do it without peeking at the answer. Results will stay sealed until after the next event, so scientists can see if their models truly work or if they need to go back to the drawing board. This blind test is more than an academic exercise. Axial Seamount sits beneath 1,400 meters of ocean, where pressure is crushing and the signals of unrest are subtle. Getting it right here could change how eruptions are forecast on mid-ocean ridges worldwide. The stakes stretch far beyond Oregon. Earth's mid-ocean ridges snake for more than 65,000 kilometers across the globe, spreading the seafloor at rates up to 6 centimeters per year. Most volcanic activity on the planet happens out of sight, under the sea. Back in the Cold War, the U.S. Navy Sosius Hydrophone Network listened for submarines along these ridges. Today, those same cables help scientists tune in to the rhythms of the planet itself. Axial has become a proving ground, where every new eruption is a live test of what science can or cannot predict about the restless world beneath the waves.
Axial's restless magma chamber proves that even the best monitored volcano on Earth can defy our predictions. As new data rewrite the timeline, every uplift and tremor reframes what we think we know. In a world hungry for certainty, nature's clock remains stubbornly its own. The next eruption is a question of when, not if. Stay curious and let the science, not the headlines, guide your perspective.